everyone. So for today, we'll be working on the solution for the Mario More Comfortable Problem Set. So what happens is that for this tutorial, what I'll be doing is to really break down the problem into step-by-step -step pieces so that we'll be able to understand how we are going to structure our approach to the solution and really find out how we can tackle this problem set. So if you enjoy this, maybe you can just give a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to this channel because that would mean so much to me and I will continue to produce more videos like this. Okay? So anyway, hopping back to the problem. This takes reference to the game called Mario that many of us are familiar with. So in the game, as you can see here, we can see a pyramid which we can recreate in C using hashes for bricks. So one thing to note is that there should be two blank spaces in between for each side. So when you're going to do the solution, that is something for us to take note of. So to start, we should know what are the parameters that we need to work with. So firstly, the user must key in a positive integer that is between 1 and 8 inclusive. So we're going to look at some examples as to what should the pyramid look like with the different heights that we key in. So if height equals to 3, this should print. If height equals to 6, this should print. And if height equals to 2, we will get a smaller pyramid like this. Now, what happens if we key in a number that is not between 1 and 8 inclusive? So the system should reject the input and keep asking you to key in another height. So you can see, as long as I key in something outside of the acceptable range, which is less than 1 or more than 8, the system will keep on asking you for another height to key in. So when you finally key in something within the accepted range, let's say I key in 4, this pyramid will print. So now, when you saw this problem set, you might be wondering, where do I even start, right? Because that's exactly how I felt when I first saw it. So we need to actually break this down into even smaller tasks and tackle it one by one. So let's first start by looking at the pyramid for when height equals to 5. So to make it easier for us to visualize what is the solution that we're trying to do, we can put the pyramid into a table. And to better visualize the blank spaces, we can just use a dot first to represent it in the meantime for visualization purposes. Okay, so I represents the row and J represents the column. So you can see is that what we want is for the code to print a table. And we need to tell the code how many rows and columns to print and also when to print hashes and when to print spaces. So in this case, the spaces will be represented by dots. So before we dive in, we need an overview about what needs to be done. What will be the structure of our code? So firstly, the code must prompt the user for an input. And next, we will begin on building our pyramid. So we will first need to define how many rows it should print. So we go horizontally first. Then we need to define how many columns it should print. So after that, we go vertically. So by doing this, what we're actually doing is that now we actually are building our table. And the last step really would be for us to fill in the table and define when do we print spaces and when do we print hashes. So let's work on the first part first, which is to prompt the user for an input. So the user will be prompted to key in an integer that is between 1 and 8 inclusive. This means that there must be a validation rule, like a check in place to check that the input is accepted. So the system should keep on asking the user for the height as long as the height key in is less than 1 or more than 8. So this means that if the input is rejected, the system will keep asking for the height. So to do this, we can actually use the do while loop. What this means is that the system will keep doing the command of asking the height as long as your height is less than 1 or more than 8. So let's use n to represent height. Okay, and now we will put this into C. So we start with the usual headers. Include C as 50. Standard I.O. Okay, so I have my usual int main void. Okay, so before I even start, I'm going to label what I'm going to do, which is to get input of the height. Okay. So now we will tell the system that there will be an input called height and this will be an integer and we will use n to represent the height. So I have int n and then this is where our do while loop will come in. So what I'm going to write here now is Okay, so I'm going to state that there's going to be an integer where we will prompt the user for the height. Okay, and all this will happen as long as n key in is less than 1 or n key in is more than 8. Okay, 
And that's all you need for the first step. So we have just written our code to prompt the user for height. Next, we need to define how many rows it should print. So based on what we saw earlier, we know that the number of rows to print equals to the height that the user keys in. But remember, in C, an array index starts with 0. So this means that the number of rows to print, which is i, equals to n minus 1. So when we write our code, we will tell the system to keep printing rows as long as i is less than n. So for example, if the height is 5, right? The system should keep printing rows and stop before it reaches i equals to n. Okay, so let's say there's n equals to 5, right? So it will print row 1 first, it will print row 2, row 3, row 4, and row 5. So can you see that at row 5, i equals to 4, right? So the system keeps printing rows as long as i is less than n. Okay, so in this case, the system kept printing rows as long as i was less than 5. Okay, so now we're going to put this into C. We will write a comment about what this section will do, which is to print the desired pyramid height. So let me just add in a comment. Okay, and we will start with the for loop. So for int i equals to 0 because we are starting from 0 then we will print as long as i is less than n and we're doing it incrementally so yep okay and that's all so we have just completed that step so now we should move on to the next step which is to define how many columns it should print so this is a bit trickier because we need to find a pattern which will give us a formula to print the number of correct columns each time so what I'd like to do is that now I'm going to examine the pyramid to try to find a pattern to define the number of columns to print and it may help if we visualize it out. Okay. What we're going to do is that we are going to examine how many rows and columns are printed for different heights of the pyramid. So let's say the height key in is 1. So this will actually be the pyramid that you have. Can you see that i equals to 0 and j prints up to 3. So I'm just going to put in a table and I'll leave the observation for later. So next, if your height equals to 2, this is what the pyramid will look like. i will print up to 1 and j will print up to 5. So for height equals to 3, i will print up to 2 and j will print up to 7. Likewise, if you go for 4, you will print up to 3 and 9 respectively. And if your pyramid is height 5, you will print up to 4 and 11 respectively. Right. So based on what we have, can you come up with a formula to get g, where the formula relates to your variable factors like i and height? Yes, yes we can. So for example, you can see that for every row, j equals to n plus i plus 2, and this applies for every row. Okay. So you can see that for every row, j equals to n plus i plus 2. So we're going to tell the system to keep printing columns as long as j is less than n plus i plus 3. Okay, so let's write this down in C. We will continue from where we left off. So I will just write a comment to label exactly what is it that I'm doing. So Right, so I'm going to just tell the system how many columns it should print. So as we discussed, again, this will be another for loop. The int j equals to 0 because we're starting from 0. Right, and then after that, as long as j is less than n plus i plus 3. And we will do incrementally, right? And yeah, that's actually all for this step. Now what we've done so far is to write down how many rows and columns we should have in our pyramid. Now, we need to fill up this table with spaces or hashes, okay? Which is the last thing that we need to do. So for this situation, you can see that there can only be two outcomes. Either a space or hash will print in the cell. So for this case, we can use the if else command. So in this case, what this command means is that if scenario X is fulfilled, we can print a space or else, which means for all other scenarios, print hash. So if you look at it, we only actually need to define when to print spaces because as long as this scenario is not met, the system will just print a hash. So let's go back to looking at the sample again. When n equals to 5, 
So this is the pyramid that we should get, but I'm going to put this into a table and visualize it better with dots. I'm also going to number my columns and rows. From what you can see, right, there's actually two main areas of the pyramid that contains dots. So we need to come up with a formula to tell the system when to print dots, and it has to be in these two areas that I've circled here. So let's go with the easy one first. So you can see that for this particular column, it cuts through all the rows and it occurs when J actually equals to N. So we can write the formula for this particular scenario as J equals to N. So likewise for the column next to it, it also cuts through all rows. So that would be when J equals to N plus 1. So that would be the next scenario that we have to print a dot. So we already have defined the two scenarios to print the dots. So that is when J equals to N and J equals to N plus 1. So now we actually need to focus on this area here and it's not as straightforward compared to the first two that we just discussed. So we actually need to dissect this to find a formula to print these dots here. So at first glance, we are not too sure how we can get it. So let's go row by row. Okay, so in this example, n equals to 5. So I'm going to be looking at the first row that will print, right? So can you see that for the first cell, i equals to 0 and j equals to 0. So i plus j will be 0 and the output is a dot. So moving on to the next cell, i equals to 0, j equals to 1. So i plus j equals to 1 and my output is a dot. So moving on to the next cell, i equals to 0, j equals to 2, i plus j equals to 2. So I'll go on to the next cell. And for this cell that breaks the trend, can you see that i equals to 0, j equals to 4. So i plus j will equals to 4. Okay. So based on this, I can actually come up with an observation and formula to actually determine when to print a dot. So can you see that we actually printed dots for when i plus j is less than n minus 1. And then we only printed a hash when i plus j equals to n minus 1. Okay, so it's too early for us to say whether this is a formula that holds true because we need to look at the rest of the rules. So let's check the rest. So moving on to the next row, let's do the same thing where we talk about i plus j values. So likewise, if I were to go through it again, can you see that the first cell, i equals to 1, j equals to 0, so i plus j equals to 1. Likewise, the next few cells, and it will break the trend and print a hash when i plus j equals to 4. So does the observation hold true? Yes, it still holds true. So now let's try another row just to really validate what we have found. So likewise for this, we printed dots when i plus j was less than n minus 1. And we printed a hash when i plus j equals to n minus 1. Okay, so what's the conclusion? To fit that scenario, the system will print a space as long as i plus j is less than n minus 1. So with that, we've actually come up with formulas for all three scenarios that we identified where the system should be printing a space. And for all other situations other than these three we've identified, the system will print a hash. So now let's put together the last part of our code which is to write down when do we print spaces and when do we print hashes, okay? So let's do it with our if-else loop that we talked about. So if first scenario j equals to n or next scenario j equals to n plus 1 or next scenario i plus j is less than n minus 1, what we want to do is that we want to print a space, right? And else, which means for all other situations, we're going to print a hash okay so then let me just wrap that up nicely okay so that is what we have let me just look through everything to make sure that we have it in order and yes i missed out something here do take note okay right so now that we're here let's test it now so we will make mario more okay it looks quite good let's to give it a try okay so now let's gonna test okay so what happens is that we must key in an integer between 1 and 8 inclusive but i'm just gonna test first if it's negative 1 correct the system rejected it and they're asking for another input let me just try another ridiculous number like 23 yep and it rejected it so now let's try when height would be let's say 4 and then we got our pyramid out very nicely so let's say if height equals to 7 and we got it out very nicely okay so that is the solution for Mario, more comfortable. And there you go. You've got this. 
So if you are keen to have the solution sets to the rest of the problems for CS50, do subscribe to the channel and do keep a lookout for our upcoming videos. Thank you.